The world is full of mysterious places that have baffled scientists for centuries, from unexplained natural occurrences to strange islands inhabited by hostile creatures. Join me for today's video. I'm going to explore 15 of the most mysterious places on Earth. Number 15. Moraki Boulders the ocean holds an endless amount of secrets, which is why we can't be too surprised when mysterious objects wash up on shore. But that doesn't mean we can't have an endless amount of questions either. According to local Maori legend, the Moraki boulders are the remains of eel baskets, kumaras, and calabashes that washed onto the shore after the wreck of the Arai Te Uru, a large sailing canoe from long ago. The rocky shoals that extended out from Shag Point, New Zealand, represent the petrified hull of the canoe. The Maori say that nearby rocky promontory represents the body of the captain. It's a beautiful thought and a more simple explanation for these massive mysteries. But is it true? Well, the Moraki boulders are a type of huge stone, recognizable for being highly spherical, sometimes almost perfectly. They can be found scattered around Koe Koe Beach near Moraki, a small town on New Zealand's coast. This section of the beach has been protected by the government as a scientific reserve thanks to the appearance of the boulders. These boulders are not only rocks of this size and shape, though. They're huge spherical boulders molded over millions of years on the other New Zealand beaches as well. They weigh several tons each. These boulders originally formed about 60 million years ago during the early Paleocene period. Some can even measure up to 9 feet across. For millions of years, the boulders lay buried underground, covered by the sands and silt of time. Slowly, they've emerged as waves wash away the mudstone and tectonic plates shift. As mesmerizing as the boulders are, there's a stunning array of seaweed, invertebrates, shells, ascidian, sponges, all washed up on the beach as well. A third of the 850 species of seaweed native to New Zealand are not found anywhere else in the world, making the beaches here not just some of the most mysterious, but some of the most special. Number 14. Yonaguni Monument we can never truly know for sure if the sunken city of Atlantis ever existed. In fact, there are cities submerged by water, so it's not that wild of a notion. And if Atlantis did really exist, then who's to say countless other cities like it didn't dot the globe? The Yonaguni Monument is an underwater mystery off the coast of the Ryukyu Islands of Japan. This massive underwater rock formation is speculated to have existed more than 10,000 years, but whether the formation is completely man-made, entirely natural, or has been altered by human hands is still up for debate. The monument was first discovered in 1986 by a diver searching for a good spot to watch hammerhead sharks, so imagine his surprise when they found that. After its discovery, Masaki Kimura, a marine geologist at the University of Ryukyu, explored the monument for nearly two decades. Kimura remains convinced that the site was carved thousands of years ago when the landmass was above water. According to him, the Yonaguni's numerous right angles, strategically placed holes, and aesthetic triangles are signs of human alteration. Kimura also believes that a pyramid, castles, roads, monuments, and a stadium can be identified within the structure, which for him is evidence that the monument is what remains of the lost continent of Mu, the Japanese equivalent to Atlantis. As with most theories about lost civilizations, Kimura has been met with controversy about his beliefs. Other experts have dived at the site and believe that the formation is caused by basic geology and classic stratigraphy for sandstones, which tends to break along planes and gives you these very straight pieces, especially in an area with lots of faults and tectonic activity. Sandstone structures typically erode into rigid formations, and it's unlikely that the structure was entirely man-made, if man-made at all, because the visible structure is connected to a hidden rock mass. But that theory isn't very fun at all. Geology and strong currents may explain the peculiar shape of the rock, but why can't they account for the pottery and stone tools found there, which possibly date back to 2500 BCE? If the monument was carved by human hands, it was during the last ice age about 10,000 years ago, when Yonaguni was part of a land bridge that connected the site to Taiwan. In this strange, mysterious world, anything is possible. Number 13. Lake Natron Unless we're living at the end of days or in the time of Moses and the pharaohs, the river should never run red. Absolutely not. So then what should we do about this next strange entry on our list? Well, don't let the ring of salty marshes along the edge of Lake Natron fool you. This body of water is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. It's colored a deep red from salt-loving organisms and algae. The lake reaches hellish temperatures and essentially becomes ammonia. Although most human settlements throughout history have formed around lakes and rivers, the barren landscape around Lake Natron tells a clear story of a place no one ever wanted to live near. Water is supposed to give life, yet this salty world seems content to make life almost impossible, almost being the keyword. 
Although most species can't handle living in a 120-degree water lake, cyanobacteria have made Lake Natron their home and are responsible for giving the water its blood-red color. This algae growth has fostered the development of lesser flamingo nests, too. Amazingly, two and a half million flamingos make Lake Natron their home, and it's considered one of their only breeding grounds, making preservation of the lake an environmental concern. In fact, those two and a half million birds represent 75% of their population. So while bringing in fresh water and converting Lake Natron into something more hospitable for humans is nice on paper, doing so would greatly upset the ecological balance of the lake. Many of the people of Tanzania are actively fighting against bringing in water from a local river. If the salinity of the lake decreases, the cyanobacteria will also decrease and cause a loss of habitat for the endangered flamingos. Besides losing a bird habitat, the world would also lose a beautiful and salty natural wonder if too much water is diverted south into Natron. Sometimes we just have to leave things alone. And if you can't stand the heat of Lake Natron, then stay out of the kitchen. Number 12. Codini You don't run into twins very often. Only three in a hundred births result in two babies, so the odds are stacked against you from the get-go. Move over to India, though, and twin births are even rarer, but don't go telling that to the villages of Codini. The village is incredibly small, with just 2,000 households. Despite this size, though, the village has one of the highest birth rates of twins in the world. Codini attracted the world's attention in 2008 when it was discovered that there were nearly 250 pairs of twins born here in the past several decades. That year alone, 15 pairs of twins were recorded being born. The local doctor, Krishnan Shribiju, believes that there are even more in the region. How could something like this happen? What is it about Codini that causes such a unique phenomenon? Actually, the answer isn't the place, it's rather the people. Even the women who leave the village are more than likely to give birth to twins. Some scientists have suggested it has to do with pollutants in the village's water. But the doctor refutes this claim, as the rate of birth defects in Kodini is no higher than anywhere else in India. Genetic researchers from India, Germany, and the UK are studying the DNA of twins in the village to try to understand the mysteriously high twinning rate. The most likely answer behind this twinning is just genetics. If the twin birthing gene are so strong here, then it should make sense that the dominant gene is being passed along from generation to generation. But either way, walking into a village where one half of the population looks like the other half makes for a mysterious sight. Number 11. Gobekli Tepe While there may be some gaps in the timeline of humanity, we pretty much know for sure our overall trajectory. Or do we? Every now and then, something shows up that tests the authenticity of everything we've ever known and forces us to go back to the drawing board. It's been agreed on that early humans first settled into their permanent towns, built farms, and then temples, all in that order, in about 8000 BCE. But a 1994 discovery kind of blew that theory wide open. Archaeologists in rural Turkey stumbled upon a fantastic finding in Gobekli Tepe. It includes rings of enormous stone pillars, all of which had scenes of animals carved right into them. After some serious carbon dating, they found that Gobekli Tepe dates back to the 10th millennium BCE, making it the oldest place of worship in the world. At least until something even older decides to unearth itself. Gobekli Tepe raises some great questions, though. Who were these people, and who or what were they worshipping? And how did they worship? Part of the beauty is we'll never really know, but it's those types of questions that can keep scholars and academics up at night. To make matters even more bizarre, evidence would suggest that the people of Gobekli Tepe were semi-nomadic hunters who didn't quite understand the concept of agriculture, especially because the cultivation of the earth at that level wouldn't appear for another 500 years. So now we have the classic chicken or the egg scenario here. Which came first? Architectural projects and then permanent settlements? Or was it the other way around? The only people who can know for sure were the ones who were there. And who knows, perhaps the people who dig up our cities millions of years from now could be asking the same questions about us. Number 10. The Mariana Trench The ocean can be a wonderful place. With warm, crystal-clear waters found in oceans around the world, there's no wonder beachfront real estate is so expensive. 71% of our blue planet is covered in water, and humans have only explored 20% of it. Talk about a drop in the bucket. So if 80% of the world's oceans is unexplored, then who knows what horrors lie beneath or what secrets the world's waters truly hold. If aliens do exist, then there's a chance they're already here living under the sea. It can be neither proven nor denied. Located in the North Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench is the deepest known trench in the world, and we've only scratched the surface of what lives down there. Humans made their first descent into the deep in 1960 in vessels specially built to handle the pressure over 35,000 feet down. 
So what have researchers found living in the trenches? Well, sea creatures that can only be described as real-life monsters. Dragonfish, goblin sharks, sea devil anglerfish, frilled sharks, and zombie worms all thrive in the coldest, darkest reaches of the trench, ready to make a quick meal out of anything they can, catching them in their maws, sometimes swallowing their prey whole. And then, there are the creatures who grow to absurdly large proportions due to a phenomenon known as deep-sea gigantism. Specifically, lower temperatures in the trench mean larger cell sizes and delayed sexual maturity in animals along with an increased lifespan. The Mariana Trench is a place where nightmares become a reality, and the only thing scarier than these real-life sea monsters are all the creatures down there that we don't know about. Adapting to some of the harshest conditions in the world means transparent skin, deep-sea gigantism, and the ability to exist in some of the most bone-crushing, organ-bursting pressure. The Mariana Trench, it's the closest thing to a black hole we'll ever find on Earth. Number 9. Ilha de Camara Grande Off the shores of beautiful Brazil, nearly a hundred miles away from downtown Sao Paulo, is Ilha de Camara Grande, also known as Snake Island. The island is the last place human developers would ever want to build, and for good reason. If the name doesn't already give it away, this place is full of snakes. Researchers estimate that there are anyone from one to five snakes per meter, all subsisting on migratory birds. And they are some pretty big birds, meaning the snakes are all pretty hefty in size as well. Don't expect to see a little garden snake slithering around on this island. In fact, don't expect to come here at all. The snakes of Camara Grande are all unique species of pit viper, the golden lancehead. This lancehead genus of snakes is responsible for 90% of Brazilian snake bite related fatalities. Because they have no natural predators here, the golden lanceheads on Snake Island grow to well over half a meter long, and they possess a powerful, fast-acting venom that melts the flesh around their bites. This island has been an evolutionary paradise for the snakes. The potent venom of this species evolved due to the need for the snake to quickly incapacitate and kill seabirds on land, on the island's trees, before they're able to fly away. On an island ecosystem occupied by hundreds of competitors, the deadly venom of the golden lancehead maximizes its potential to feed and survive. The only thing the snakes are fighting is the other snakes on the island. Here, you don't have to be the biggest and the baddest. Your venom just needs to be the most potent. Charles Darwin would be proud. In the past, a fisherman unknowingly came upon the island and succumbed to a bite, and the island's final lighthouse operator was bitten along with his family. Because of these stories and because of the golden lance heads are so dangerous, with the exception of some scientific outfits, the Brazilian Navy has expressly forbidden anyone from landing on the island. Number 8. Island of the Dolls Many people know about the Island of the Dolls in Mexico, but they may not know the full story. It's a bit of a doozy, one fitting for something so horrifying. It all began decades ago. One Don Julian Santana left his wife and child and moved onto an island on Tashuilo Lake in the Xochimilco Canals. According to some, a young girl actually drowned in the lake, but many others firmly believe Don Julian Santana merely imagined the drowned girl. Regardless, he devoted his life to honoring this lost soul in a unique, fascinating, yet unnerving way. He collected and hung dolls by the hundreds. Eventually, Don Julian transformed the entire island into a kind of bizarre, spooky, doll-infested nightmare wonderland. Don Julian Santana began collecting lost dolls from the canals and the trash near his island home. He's also said to have traded the produce he grew to locals for more dolls. Santana didn't even clean the dolls or attempt to fix them up, but rather put them up with missing eyes and limbs covered in dirt and generally in whatever ramshackle state he found them in. It's not a very welcoming sight, and the island of the dolls has become a hotspot for dark tourists over the years. Even when the dolls arrived in good shape, the wind and weather turned them into cracked and distorted versions of themselves. Don Julian also kept his cabin filled with dolls too, which he dressed in headdresses, sunglasses, and other accoutrement. Despite the fact that most people found the island frightening, Don Julian saw the dolls as beautiful protectors and he welcomed visitors, whom he would show around, charging a small fee for taking photos. In 2001, Don Julian Santana was found drowned in the same area in which he believed the little girl had died. It's a sad story that managed to come full circle. Number 7. The Bermuda Triangle the Bermuda Triangle is one of the most mysterious places on Earth, and its reputation as a place of unexplained disappearances has only added to its intrigue. The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, is in an area of the North Atlantic bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. 
Since the 1800s, more than a thousand ships and planes have disappeared within its borders, leaving no trace of their whereabouts. Theories abound as to what could be causing these disappearances, ranging from natural disasters to supernatural forces. Some believe the area is plagued by rogue waves, which can reach heights of up to 100 feet and easily capsize ships. Others point to the strong currents in the region, which can cause ships and planes to drift off course and become lost. Some conspiracy theorists claim the disappearances are the result of extraterrestrial activity, with aliens abducting ships and planes for their own mysterious purposes. Despite many theories, there's no clear explanation for the strange occurrences within the Bermuda Triangle. Some of the most famous disappearances include the USS Cyclops, a Navy ship that vanished without a trace in 1918, with 309 crew members on board and Flight 19, a group of five Navy bombers that disappeared in 1945 during a training mission. In both cases, no wreckage or bodies were ever found, leaving their fates a mystery. Despite many theories and stories surrounding the Bermuda Triangle, the truth remains elusive. While some believe that the disappearances are the result of natural phenomenon or human error, others are convinced that there's something supernatural at work. Whatever the cause, the Bermuda Triangle remains one of the most mysterious and intriguing places on Earth, continuing to captivate the imaginations of the people around the world. Number 6. The Crooked Forest Blending dark fantasy and ecological abnormality, a group of 400 trees in Poland's Kosciewicz, the Crooked Forest, are mysteriously and identically bent. Hovering just inches above the ground, the trees take a dramatic, sharp turn upwards toward the sky, rounding into little J-shapes as they make their ascent. There's no definitive answer for the tree's bizarre shape, and the stories about them run the gamut from the practical to the bizarre. The most grounded explanation among those seeking answers is that the trees may have simply been buried beneath a terrible snowstorm in their infancy, and nature just took its course from there. Others believe the gravitational pull in that area is so strong that it morphed the trunks. The most intriguing explanation suggests that local foresters manipulated the trees after planting them in 1925. Apparently, the foresters hoped to make furniture from the bent shapes and intervened when their trees were only 10 years old, refusing to let the trees grow upwards. These foresters severely stunted their growth. But when World War II reared its ugly head in 1939, the foresters abandoned those efforts, leaving behind an ominous ecological mark on the forest for 80 years. Every tree in the crooked forest has the same haunting bend, but despite bent beginnings, they've all grown to be tall and seemingly unhampered by their curves. Trees are resilient, and so they continue to thrive, relying on one branch they had left to take over complete function and grow upwards. Whatever damage occurred to one tree must have happened to them all, because they all remain uniform in deformity. But whatever the truth is, the crooked forest is the last place you'd want to find yourself alone in at night. Number 5. Bangar Fort Built in the 17th century, India's Bangar Fort is thought to be the most haunted place in all of India, causing the local population to build a town away from the abandoned military installation and outlaw anyone from entering the grounds after sunset. Yikes! The fort consists of a small city with temples, palaces, and multiple gates throughout, all allegedly crawling with ghosts and goblins. The sprawling grounds cover a large patch of land at the foot of a picturesque mountain, but according to locals, all is not well. There's no shortage of local legends surrounding Bangar Fort, but two stand above the rest. The first legend tells of a holy man who lived in Bangar Fort and built a house that he didn't want any other house to eclipse. He warned that should the shadow of any taller building ever touch his home, he would destroy the entire fort. Someone built a bigger house, the shadows crept in on his home, and he subsequently burnt the fort to the ground. The second big legend says a curse was laid on the city by a mythical wizard. As he was killed by a woman, he tried and failed to put a spell on. He was crushed by a boulder. He cursed the city to be destroyed, and sure enough, marauders soon sacked the fort and killed each and every resident. Both legends are equally dark and only help to reinforce the ominous presence in the stone walls. Despite so many people steering clear, the fort is still incredibly well preserved. The fort is even open to visitors during the day, but come sundown, all bets are off. The Archaeological Survey of India has put up a sign reading, quote, It's strictly prohibited to enter the borders of Bangar before sunrise and after sunset. Legal action will be taken against those who do not follow these instructions, end quote. Yet that's the nice version. Some locals have said that going there at night means staying there forever. There's only one way to find out, I guess. Number 4. Hang Sang Dung Roughly translating to Mountain River Cave, Hang Sang Dung in Vietnam is the world's largest cave. So large, in fact, that it can hold a modern-day skyscraper inside of it. And it's got its own small jungle in there, too. 
It's located near the Vietnam-Laos border. The cave was found by a local man named Ho Khan in 1991. The locals, it is said, were too afraid of the cave to go exploring because of the sound coming from the fast-moving underground river, as well as the huge vertical drop. And who could blame them? The cave was generally left untouched until 2009, when a group of scientists from the British Cave Research Association began an extensive survey of the cave's depths. According to the man leading the survey, the cave is five times larger than Pong Na, which once held the title of the largest in Vietnam, and the biggest chamber is over three miles long and almost a thousand feet tall. And then there's the subterranean jungle. The jungle of Hung Sang Duan is formed underneath the collapsed roof of one of the caverns. Once the roof collapsed, just enough light spilled into the cavern so that vegetation was able to creep in, slowly from outside. As the vegetation took hold, larger and larger plants began to grow, and now hornbills, flying foxes, and monkeys dwell in its branches. The entire process took years, and it's one of nature's happier accidents. And as you'd expect, Hong Song Dun is a tourist hotspot. But tours ain't cheap. On the lower end, they can start around $3,000 and go all the way up to $5,000. Number 3. The Nazca Lines Stretching across nearly 200 square miles of a high, arid plateau, the Nazca Lines are one of life's greatest and most exciting mysteries. The lines are drawings of hundreds of figures ranging from giant spiders to vast geometric shapes to enormous monkeys as large as 890 feet. Hummingbirds, fish, sharks, or orcas, llamas, and lizards, and depending on who you ask, even astronauts, aliens, and landing zones. One of the most tantalizingly mysterious archaeological mysteries, these geoglyphs spawned with wild theories about the ancient Peruvian peoples that made them. One significant reason there's so much interest in the drawings is the fact they can only be fully seen from a few hundred feet in the air, meaning that the people who created them never would have any way to see them in full, or perhaps they did. One will never know. The giant glyphs were made between 200 BC and 600 AD, the time of the technologically sophisticated Nazca people, who are believed to have created the lines. They were created by scraping a 10-30 to 30 centimeter layer of iron oxide off the dry desert floor. Now, due to the incredible dryness and consistent weather of the area, this was all it took to create images that have lasted for well over 1,500 years. The lines were first systematically studied by the Peruvian archaeologist Torabio Mejia Giuseppe in 1926, and ever since, it's been a mystery. But then how did the ancient Peruvians manage to orchestrate all this? The most likely construction method involves putting stakes in the ground, tying a rope between them, and then scraping the dirt off along the rope, as if following a giant ancient stencil. This would explain the geometric shape of many of the lines, as well as how the Nazca would have kept the measurements for the drawings in ratio to each other. By simply multiplying the measurements of a drawing into rope lengths, wooden stakes found in the ground at the end of some lines support this theory of creation. But no one knows why they made them. That's where everyone is stumped. One possible explanation is that the lines were made to be walked on as a sort of ceremonial procession that is a sacred area where the Nazca prayed to various gods involving agriculture and water. The shapes were then never meant to be seen at all, and so seeing them from the sky is just a fun byproduct of the artwork. But when you have markings in the sand like this, the alien conspiracy theorists tend to come out of the woodwork. Lots of people will tell you the Nazca lines were created by ancient aliens who communicated with the Peruvians and used the lines as navigational devices or even landing fields of some type of ancient astronaut. Despite the figures having been examined by numerous anthropologists, ethnologists, and archaeologists, not to mention New Age hippies, ancient astronaut theorists, and alien enthusiasts, we may never truly know what the Nazca lines were meant for, or how the Nazca people intended them to be seen. What we do know is that they're incredibly fun to think about. The good kind of conspiracy. But these lines have seen some intrusion and damage over the years. When the Pan American 1S Highway was constructed through the area, it transected the lines themselves. Another incident happened in 2014 when Greenpeace activists ironically walked across part of the plane to lay a banner near the hummingbird. By not wearing the special protective shoes used by researchers, they caused permanent damage to the soil. Number 2. Jatinga Bird lovers beware, over the last century, thousands of birds have flown to their death over a small strip of land in Jatinga, India. In a town of only 2,500 people, this bizarre occurrence remains mostly unexplained. After monsoon season, 44 species of birds in Jatinga suddenly become disturbed in the evening hours. 
becoming strangely disoriented, the birds plunge towards the lights of the city and to their doom. While the birds have been known to occasionally plunge to their deaths, it usually is the villagers in Jatinga who do the actual killing. Believing them to be terrible spirits flying from the sky, the villagers took to capturing the birds with bamboo poles and then beating them to death. Despite the danger and the repeat performances every year, the birds continue to fly to their death in this small area. A number of theories have been proposed, one suggesting that a combination of high altitude, high winds, and fog leads to the birds becoming disoriented. The light attracts them as a sort of flight stabilization, and like moths to a flame, they take the plunge. Another theory suggests that the weather of the region leads to changes in the magnetic qualities of the underground water, causing the birds' disoriented state. We may never know for sure, but what we do know is this village loves to bash those birds, so much so that wildlife and bird societies in India have gone to the village to educate them about the phenomenon in an attempt to stop the mass murder of these birds. Since then, the bird deaths have decreased by 40%. Government officials in Assam hope to use the phenomenon to attract tourists to the small city, and some work has gone into creating accommodations for visitors in Jatinga. It's certainly a strange way to put a place on a map. Number 1. The Crypto Sculpture Cryptos is an awesome sculpture by the American artist Jim Sanborn, located on the grounds of the CIA headquarters in Virginia. Since its dedication on November 3, 1990, there's been much speculation about the meaning of the four encrypted messages it bears. Three out of the four messages have been solved, but the fourth remains an absolute mystery, and it's one of the most famous unsolved codes in the world. Sanborn has already given four clues to entice cryptanalysts, but so far everyone remains stumped. But these first three answers are long and were only solved by a computer scientist, CIA analyst, and Canadian logician, and NSA employees. If you want to solve crypto, then you need to do a little bit more than the Sunday Times crosswords. You need to be a mathematical genius. Naturally, there are multiple online communities dedicated to solving the final message of cryptos, and Sanborn has been feeding them clues from 2006 to 2020. The answer to the fourth clue lies not only within the answers to the first three, but already existing famous clocks around Berlin. To this day, only one person knows the real answer to the final clue of Kryptos. And if he dies before it's solved, and if he dies before it's solved, then the answer may just die with him. I'll see you next time. Watch our obscure playlist for more top 15 videos about the more obscure subjects in our world. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best and most obscure videos. The Top 5 Show has launched channel memberships. Thank you to our channel members.